Thank you so much. Every time I see that video, I always wonder, who is that scary person? It can't be me. <laughs> Growing up in my family, the word disabled was not used. We never hid the fact that I was born missing my right leg and hip, but it was just never treated as a big deal. I was never given any kind of special treatment, and it was never used as an excuse. Even though I may have tried to get away with murder as a child, it was never because I only had one leg. I got my first prosthetic leg when I was 11 months old. But as far as I can remember, every day when I would wake up, I would think to myself, what am I doing today? And decide, should I go with one leg or should I go with two legs? It was always just used as a tool to make things easier for myself. It was never an extension of who I was, and it had no bearing on what I was able to do. My parents made a conscious choice that to get me involved in as many physical activities as possible at a young age. They thought that this would be a great opportunity for me to learn about my body and be comfortable with myself. They wanted me to be comfortable before I was at an age where I'd be self-conscious about only having one leg. So at two years old, I was put into the swimming pool, and I always took to the, took to the water. I felt so free in the water. It was the only time that I was able to be free without having crutches or a prosthetic leg. After swimming, I tried every sport under the moon, and I always participated against able-bodied children. My parents wanted me to have as most normal of a childhood as possible. They knew that participating in physical activities and sports was not always going to be easy for me. I was never the best, and I fell down a lot. But they knew they had to make me strong. I was going to face challenges beyond those of a normal child. They put their own feelings aside, and when they would see me fall down and have scrapes and bruises all over my body, they would just encourage me to get up and try again. They put their own feelings aside to do what was best for me. And they did an amazing job. I gained such a strong sense of self and confidence at a young age. I remember joking with my friends that when I swam, I looked more like a fish with a tail than a person with two legs, and it would probably be a good idea for me to be a pogo stick for Halloween. I remember the first time I heard the word Paralympics. I was 12 years old. I was at a swim meet and I had just begun competitive swimming. An official had come up to me and he talked to me after my swim. The swim meet I was competing as an able-bodied child because as far as I knew, that's what I was. He told me that I didn't have to compete against these kinds of swimmers. There was a special category for me and I could compete against other swimmers just like me. I was so confused and pretty upset. Swimmers just like me, I didn't understand. As far as I knew, I was a normal kid, and I belonged here. My coach later explained to me about the Paralympics. There were special categories for people who had disabilities to compete in. It was to make it fair. He said it was totally up to me and it was my choice, but he encouraged me to give it a try. With a lot of hesitancy, because I'd never been put in a special category in my entire life, I decided to give it a try. I went to the national competition for para-athletes, which was being held at the same meet as junior national for able-bodied swimmers. I got to travel to this meet with my other able-bodied teammates that had qualified for the junior nationals. So at this meet, I would be at the hotel and training and in warm-up with my able-bodied peers, but when I competed, I was in my special Paralympic category. At this meet, people asked me, who do you relate more to, people with one leg or people with two legs? And it really made me think, and I realized who I relate to are athletes. It didn't matter if they had one leg or two. And it didn't matter what meet I was at, whether it was a Paralympic meet or an able-bodied meet, as long as I had a lane and had the opportunity to better my own times, I was going to do the best job I could do for that day, and that's all that mattered. However, not everyone agreed that I was just a normal swimmer and that I could compete against able-bodied swimmers and Paralympic swimmers. I believed that it didn't matter what meet I was at, but when I went to able-bodied meets, I some, sometimes came across the attitude of people feeling sorry for me and having sympathy for me. And I remember having awful races and people thinking, great job, you know, you're amazing. And I would think, that was not a great swim. And at that point, I realized I was going to have to find coaches who expected me to do a lot more than just participate, who would expect me to do a lot more than just try. 
I wanted to be in an environment where I would be challenged. When I met the coaches at the UVic program, Ron Jacks and Peter Vizzoli, it was obvious that they did not feel sorry for me. They did not think I was amazing just because I was a swimmer with one leg. They saw a hardworking athlete. They saw someone with determination and drive, and they thought that I had something to offer to the program. The UVic program had a reputation for being one of the hardest programs in the country. And while at this point I had already had five gold medals and five world records at the Sydney Paralympic Games, I was being recognized as one of the best para-athletes in the country, I wanted to know that I was an elite athlete, not just because I was in a different category. I wanted to test my abilities, my hard work, and my dedication against the top of the top athletes. I knew that UVic was the place for me. My first day on the Vikes team, Ron and Peter told me their expectations for me were the exact same as their expectation for the other Olympians in the program. These expectations included six kilometer workouts 10 times a week. This would be two workouts a day, the first workout starting at 5.15 in the morning, alarm going off 4.45. This is what the next six years would look like for me. They made it clear that there was no distinction between me and the other Olympians in the program, and they were good on their word. They were never shy to tell me if I was lagging behind or needed a kick in the butt. And while it was probably good at the time that swimming is a sport where your face is in the water and they couldn't hear what I was saying back to them, <laughs> I can say with complete certainty, looking back today, that they're, the only way that I was able to achieve what I have is because of the swimmer they always knew I could be and refusing to accept anything less from me. It is every varsity athlete's dream to qualify for the CIS championships and represent their university at the nationals, at the national level. I had already succeeded at the Paralympic stage, but Ron and Peter believed that I could do more. They knew that I would bring hard work and determination, dedication and drive to their program, but they also believed that I could actually get up and race at the varsity level. My goal became to qualify, able-bodied, for the CIS championships. My first year as a varsity athlete, the CIS championships were being held in Toronto, which was my hometown. So it, it was a little bit extra special for me to be able to represent my university in front of my friends and family. So when I failed to qualify for the CIS championships at the beginning of the season, the pressure began to build. It came down to the last meet that I was able to qualify at. And I remember standing behind the blocks and feeling so nervous I thought I was going to throw up. And it's the exact same feeling I had before my first Paralympic race and it made me realize that it didn't matter if I was at the world stage, being able to represent my university as an able-bodied athlete in front of my friends and family meant just as much to me. And I pulled it together and I did end up qualifying in the 200 meter backstroke for the CIS championships. No special category, I was going to the university nationals.